Rough deal? No, we had just paid a scalper 20,000 yen, or roughly $200, and now our family of four could experience the Japanese love for America's favorite pastime, baseball. In 2005, my husband Stephen and I traveled to Japan with our two young daughters and were lucky enough to visit the city of Kobe when the Hanshin Tigers were in town. They were hosting the Tokyo Giants at Koshien Stadium that warm summer night and the crowd of 50,000 diehard fans was humming with excitement over the sold out game. More than humming, actually. The noise level at a Japanese ball game is absolutely deafening. The home team and visiting team each have their own cheering sections. There are cheers for every player that comes up to bat, and the fans chant them in unison while smacking miniature plastic bats in rhythm. These bats are used for other purposes as well. When the Tiger's big slugger was intentionally walked, the lady next to me, obviously a Tiger's fan, expressed her outrage by shouting and whacking her bats mercilessly on the fence. Somewhere behind me, a drum beat out a loud and rhythmic boom, boom, boom. Two men in the stands, dressed in brightly colored hockey coats and wearing white gloves, were coordinating the cheers for the Giants. One of them jumped up and down frantically like he was attached to a spring and blew non-stop on an ear-piercing whistle. Peep, peep, peep. Then suddenly, when the happening was over and the Tigers came up to bat, the cheering and noise around us stopped. This was Japan, after all, and it is rude to cheer or boo when the opposition is up. Or maybe they were just exhausted from all that shouting and jumping and it did to catch their breath. Now, from the opposite side of the stadium, it was the Tigers fans' turn to make some noise and wave a huge flag from the stands. Even though we were in the official Tigers cheering section, there were plenty of Tigers fans where we sat, like the lady next to me who screamed and clapped her backs incessantly. No hot dogs or cracker jack at a Japanese ballpark. Instead, I got a bento, a box lunch, with rice and fried pork cutlet. I was disappointed, though. Like most baseball park food back home in Chicago, it was overpriced and mediocre. Maybe I should have gotten the curry rice instead. But better to do what some other fans do, bring their own bento, no doubt purchased at a convenience store on the way to the park. During the seventh inning stretch, everyone in the stands released long, skinny balloons, punctuating the night sky with bright flecks of green, orange, and blue like fireworks without the big bang. The Tigers went on to win over the Giants, and the player who made the winning run was honored afterwards. The two Tigers mascots, Tolucky and Lucky, ran out and cavorted around the field. They were, of course, two people wearing tiger costumes. Tolucky the boy tiger, and Lucky in her tiger skirt, and the girl. Everyone sang the official Tigers song, which we didn't know, to celebrate the victory and then it was time to go. We all spilled out into the night. Everyone was happy and excited, except understandably the Giants fans. Their cheering section made a quick and quiet exit. The souvenir stalls were packed. Just like back home, the fans sported pinstripe jerseys, only with names like Kanemoto, Imaoka, Yano. And Tiger's headbands with little striped furry ears were very popular with female fans. At one of the stands, I stopped to buy a towel, the long, thin ones that the fans proudly drape around their necks with the logo of the Hanshin Tigers. As a Cubs fan, it's easy to feel an affinity with a team that has won the Japan series only once. <laughs> <laughs>